Hi, I'm Val from Quilty Pleasures and welcome back to the next session on my favorite color is Moda uh, sampler quilt. I hope you had fun making block number one. It's big, it goes together pretty quickly, so off to a good start. This week we can step up the pace a little bit because the next two blocks, blocks two and three, are identical. The only difference between them is the color placement. So here they are. They are variations on just a traditional courthouse step block, uh, constructed very much um, like a log cabin block, only you're doing alternate sides and back and forth. So it's a very easy block to do. Um, my only comment right now for this is that because you have, I have several comments, so anyway, I'll just start at the beginning. Um, because all of your pieces are pre-cut, it's really important that you pay attention to your quarter inch seam allowance. Um, there's a myth out there in quilt land that says you can, as long as you're consistent, your quarter inch doesn't really matter, but it really does unless you're working only with squares. But if you're working with um, putting a piece together and then trying to add a rectangle or a triangle or any other shape, if your quarter inch seam allowance is not accurate, your pre-cut piece is not going to fit. Uh, it's just basic geometry, but trust me, it's important. And um, so you do need to pay attention to your quarter inch seam allowance. If you're having trouble, just do a test. You've got some scrap fabric with your kit. Um, just do a test. Check to make sure that your quarter inch is actually a quarter inch. And a good way to do that is to sew three two and a half inch strips together and then measure the middle one after you're finished. It should measure two inches. And if it is too narrow, under two inches, it means that your quarter inch seam allowance is too wide, so you have to scale it in a little bit. If your um, middle strip is too wide, measures more than two inches, then it means that your quarter inch seam allowance is a little too scant and you need to add it up a little bit. So um, do take the time to make a, a test and make sure that your quarter inch is good. If it isn't and you're having trouble adjusting it, Try using a quarter inch foot either with or without a guide. And again, do your test to make sure that, that you're using it properly and if you have to make any adjustments to your sewing technique. I know sometimes if I have a guide on my foot, I tend to crowd it a little bit and I'll get a, a seam allowance that's too wide. I'm better off without a guide. I just use the edge of my foot. But it takes a little bit of practice and kind of getting used to, to your foot and adjusting your techniques. So take the time to do that. You'll find it pays off. Um, also, I've talked before about the uh, six in one stitch guides. Those are really useful. So you can feed your fabric ahead of the needle and you're not worried so much at the foot and at the needle drop. You're not steering your fabric and kind of distorting it and getting wobbly seams and seams and things. So, um, you know, maybe a, a seam guide ahead of the needle will help you as well. The other thing to pay attention to is your pressing. You want your, your finished seams to lie nice and flat. You don't want to press any puckers or pleats into them because again, that will affect how your next piece fits on. So just take the time and, um, you know, make sure that, that your, uh, your seams are nice and flat and nothing is flipped the wrong way or doing anything horrible to, to mess you up later. I did have one comment about the pressing instructions. In the pattern, they say to press toward the uh, green corner stones when you're making your, your strips to add on. I disagreed with that. I, I started that way and then I switched it because um, I was finding it was too lumpy. If you press towards the, I don't know if you can see, if I had pressed the seam allowance toward the green, there would be two seam allowances. And then when I press it towards the strip, that would make three sets of stream allow seam allowances, like what's that, three to six, six layers of fabric? Of fabric? That's a lot. 
if I press towards the strip and then press towards the rectangle, I don't have as many layers here and it goes in nice and flat. And here at the intersection of the cornerstones, it distributes the bulk better so that I don't have green, green, pink, all piled up on top of each other. So I think once you do it, you'll realize why it works better pressing towards the um, towards the strip rather than towards the cornerstone. But other than that, it's very straightforward and I don't think you'll have any issues as long as you pay attention to your quarter inch and your pressing. As always, we have uh, printed comments from me on our website as well. So uh, you don't have to just keep watching me talk to you. You can, you can print it out and read it or just look at it on your screen and um, kind of covers the, the same information, but you can have it with you at your sewing machine. So have fun with it. If you have any problems at all, um, let us know and we'll try and help you. It's kind of awkward these days because we can't give you some hands-on, one-on-one help, but uh, if we can do anything over email or over the phone, we're happy to, to do that. So just give us a shout if you need anything from us. Two blocks, they're going to be the same, just your color placement is going to be a little bit different, so you get a different look. Yeah, so it's a nice block, and I think you'll have fun with it, and um, shouldn't take you too long, and so we'll come back with block four, and actually we may be able to do two next time, too. Yes, blocks four and five are also identical, so we'll do those together, and um, and that'll, that'll move us along, and, and then we'll be quarter of the way through the book. Okay, have fun.